Hello friends, and welcome to Sanctioneering. In this example, we have two aqueous streams containing 20 and 60 whey percent sulfuric acid, and they're mixed to form a 4 molar solution. This is intended to give us some more practice for mass balance. Try to calculate the mass fraction of the sulfuric acid in the product solution. Take 100 kilograms of the 20% solution as a feed, as a basis. Draw and label the flow chart, and calculate the feed ratio. And finally, what is the feed rate? that would be required to produce 1250 kilograms per hour of the product. I encourage you to try this out by yourself before continuing. Assuming you've tried it out for a bit, we can start by labeling the process flow diagram as such. We have our system with two inflows and one outflow as a product. Now we can begin to label this by making a feed stream with the mass fraction denoted as W for the mass fraction of species. And I'll use A for acid and W for water so for the first one, it will be the first stream with mass one and a corresponding concentration and volume, as well as the corresponding mass fraction. So this is the mass fraction of acid in the first stream. And we can also label the specific gravity as density. I like to use SI units. And similarly for stream two, we can label these streams with this mass fraction of 0.6 and the corresponding mass fraction of water with its corresponding density. And now finally for the third stream, we know the specific gravity as 1.213, and this stream would be labeled stream 3 with corresponding volume, concentration, and mass fraction as well. Now the first part of the question asks us to calculate the mass fraction of sulfuric acid in the product solution. So that means we can focus our attention on just the product solution, which would just be this stream here. Now at this point, if you got stuck, I encourage you to really resist the urge to check the answer right away and try the calculation for yourself. Now for this part of the solution, we have the concentration, which is 4 molar, the molecular weight of sulfuric acid to cancel out moles and convert to grams, and using density and some unit conversions, we actually solve for the mass fraction of the product stream. Now be careful with this math and I really hope you understand how we got this because we're going to use this exact value for the rest of the problem. Now taking 100 kilograms of the feed solution as a basis, Draw, the, draw a label the flow chart in the process, labeling both the masses and the volumes, and calculate the feed ratio. Now for this part of the problem, we can take 100 kilograms as a basis. So a basis is just a simple way of making up a number and using that number to continue on for the rest of the problem. So we can use the principles of chemical engineering to write the overall mass balance, which we know is the summation of all the streams going in and setting them equal to all the streams coming out. Replacing this for our equation, we have the summation of the first and the second stream is equal to the third stream. And we can even replace this 100 kilograms of feet as such. Now for the acid balance, we can apply the same exact equations, but this time we need to do it in terms of the mass fraction. The mass fraction of the species in the stream times the mass of the stream is going to be equal to the mass of the species in that stream. This is from the definition of mass fraction. And what this, what this means is we simply multiply the mass fraction by the mass of the stream. And we have it for stream one, but we don't have it for stream two, so that's why we're using these labels. In other words, this equation is going to be written as 20 plus 0.6 M2 and set that equal to 0.323 M3. And now look, we have two equations and two unknowns. So we can plug in the original mass balance equation and solve for the system of equations. This is going to give us an answer for M2 and M3. Question is, why don't you need water? Well, you could very well have done it for water, but it would have been redundant because the mass fraction of water is a function of the mass fraction of the acid. So you have an extra equation and it would be redundant. You could do it yourself if you don't believe me. But here's our answer. Now that we solve for these, we can replace them in our system diagram for mass one, mass two, and mass three. And now we need to calculate the feed ratio, which we can do by using the definition of density, and calculating the volume of the species in the first one by using the density, we're going to get 0 0.087 meters cubed, and for the second stream, we're going to get about 0 0.0302 meters cubed. And now we can answer the question, which is to calculate the ratio of the volumes. And plugging this in, we get an answer of 2.9. 
Now the third question is to calculate the feed rate that would be required for stream 2 such that the product would be 1250 kilograms per hour. Now we can apply the same exact equations except these now are unknowns and this is our new basis and using the definition of mass flow rate we can apply these equations from the original mass balance by writing the summation of everything coming in is equal to the summation of everything coming out and similarly applying the equations We solve for the mass flow rate of stream 2 to be about 384 kilograms per hour. And now we can use the density equation to convert it into volume flow rate. But there's an alternate method. So previously for stream 2 we said that the mass for 44.4 kilograms corresponds to the product stream of 144.4 kilograms. But now we need to solve for the mass flow rate of stream 2 such that we yield 1250 kilograms per hour. So converting this math into the following equation will give us a ratio for the mass flow rate of stream 2 with respect to mass flow rate of stream 3. And now we have one equation, one unknown. Chugging through the algebra, we get about 384 kilograms per hour. The same thing, but much easier. So now using this mass flow rate, we can convert it using density into the volumetric flow rate that it asked for. And this is our final answer. So in this example, we can use chemi to solve chemistry problems by applying the conservation of mass. We also learned the principles of making a basis, and we can continue practicing that in future problems. And notice how you need part A to do part B. So for my midterm, if we had this kind of problem, it wouldn't show us part A or part B first. It would just say calculate for part C. In these examples, we're trying to develop these skills through problem solving to recognize what you need and what you don't need. So here's one trick. Suppose you mess up in part A and that's gonna affect the rest of the problem, right? Well, it doesn't really matter. Just continue and then go back and iterate to resolve for your true answer. For the sake of exams, it's better to continue with the wrong number than to get stuck on no right numbers because you have a limited number of time. However, if you do get a negative number, then you're done. I don't know what to tell you for that. Try not to make any mistakes like saying 0.323 times 100 is 323. And especially do not make calculator mistakes. As usual, here are some tips that you can always apply to all these problems for your engineering classes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my playlist for the mass balance, and you can check out my social media at Sanjinuri. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.